Trusting someone in the drug business is foolishness. In the blink of an eye, your so-called friends can be your closest foes who would overturn you as soon as you are no longer valuable to them. There had been numerous events of friends testifying against each other and becoming witnesses for the things that had once been their shared secrets. Today, we will talk about one certain case that surfaced 20 years later since its actual deal. In the late 1990s, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman secretly dealt with the DEA giving up his rivals and partner in crime, Hector El Guerrero Palma, in return for immunity while being in prison. This is just proof that El Chapo never misses a single chance of doing filthy business. Despite being in prison at the time, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman attempted to strike a deal with the United States which had re which, ha which has remainly lo Despite being in prison at the time, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman attempted to strike a deal with the United States which has remained largely unknown for over 20 years. How cruel this man is to turn his own friend down to get his own benefit. Our man, Hector El Guerrero Palmer, seemed to have hard luck and was even brutalized more by the rivals and his friends and losing his family in one of the most horrifying heart-wrenching events. His life was made miserable by fierce rivalry, vengeance and betrayal by his own partner, which deserve condolences and sympathy. How did this person start his career in the drug business? What was the stake he risked being the closest to El Chapo? All these and more as we uncover various events in the life of Hector El Guerrero Palmer, El Chapo's right-hand man. The Start Hector Luis Palmer Salazar was born in any year between 1950 and 1960 in a town called Noria de Abajo Mocorito, state of Sinaloa, Republic of Mexico. At an early age, he felt the obligation to leave school without even completing primary level to help his family which were facing poverty. He began to thrive in his criminal career after attracting the attention of a man who already had a distinguished career as a drug lord, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. El Guero started as a car thief on his own initiative, working as a gunman for Felix Gallardo under the umbrella of the Guadalajara cartel. Palmer's rank was promoted to the category of hired assassin. The organization entrusted him with the logistics of heavy shipments of drugs through one of the entry points of his country within the United States, along with Alberto El Lobito Retamosa Mercado. Eventually, he became a co-leader of the cartel and was associated with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. After the loss of a large cocaine shipment which was blamed on El Chapo and Palmer in 1988, El Lobito Retamosa was killed. How did it happen? El Guero Palmer betrayed Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. Wealth, greed and desires pushed Palmer in such a way he could not resist the temptation to keep the cargo. He traded with the consequences that can result from violating the cold of the ideal executive of the cartel. After that, Hector El Guero Palmer's life took on a different dimension. The Chief of Chiefs, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, would not rest until he got revenge and drew a sinister plan aimed at causing him the greatest possible emotional suffering. The plan had begun by hiring an expert in the subject, Rafael Enrique Clavel Moreno. On the other hand, Palmer created an alliance with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman of the Sinaloa cartel. As a result of Palmer's splintering, Felix Gallardo's nephews in Tijuana formed the Tijuana Cartel, also known as Ariano Felix Organization. Along with the imposter, Rafael Enrique Clavel Moreno, the one-time boyfriend of Palmer's sister, Minerva Palmer, El Guerra Palmer began to operate their own cartel. The conflict between the Sinaloa Cartel and Tijuana Cartel intensified after El Chapo and El Guerra Palmer tried to kill Raymond Eduardo Ariano Felix at a nightclub in Puerto Valatar, but the botched attempt hit and killed six others instead. The violence had spilled over into the lives of the cartel families, resulting in the heart-wrenching revenge. The handsome guy had a mission to infiltrate the family of Palmer. While Palmer was away, Clavel Moreno succeeded in every assassination mission that was passed on to him. Clavel Moreno fulfilled all the faces of the assigned mission. He earned his trust, leading him to become a partner in the illegal risky project. Then he used his seduction skills to marry the sister of Palmer, and the final phase was to become his wife's lover. 
He convinced Guadalupe Lea Palmer, El Guero's wife, to take 2 million pesos or $7 million from her accounts to escape with him to San Francisco, California, where they stayed at a hotel and later decapitated her and shipped her head back to El Guero Palmer, properly preserved in a cooler. In 1988, Palmer was arrested in Arizona for drug trafficking and sentenced to eight years in US prison. Upon his release, he discovered his wife, Guadalupe Lea Sereno, had run off with Clavel Moreno and took her and Palmer's two children. About 15 days later, the two young children, Jesus aged five and Natalie aged four, were taken to Venezuela and thrown off a bridge named Puente de la Concordia. Located in the city of San Cristobal, Taquira, about 40 kilometers from the border of Colombia. To make El Guero suffer even more, Clavel Moreno took a video of the terrifying event and sent it to him. Soon after, Clavel Moreno began working for the Tijuana cartel. The Oath of Vengeance In retaliation, Palmer executed Gallardo's lawyer and Clavel's three children. Clavel was arrested and soon was murdered in jail by an inmate. It is also attributed to Palmer that he perpetrated murders of other six Ariana family members of the activist for the defense of human rights, Norma Corona Salazar, and three students of Venezuelan nationality registered in the Autonomous University of Sinaloa. In addition, he was linked to the attack on a nightclub in Puerto Valatar, Jalisco. The goal of the attack was to end the life of Ariano Felix brothers. However, it was nothing compared to what his former boss had done to him. Palmer returned to trafficking, and this time sharing leadership with Adrian Palmer Reyes and Joaquin El Chapo Guzman within the Sinaloa cartel. Adrian Palmer Reyes became a lieutenant of Guzman and leader of the Badi Regado Plaza in Sinaloa. The second arrest. El Guero Palmer was arrested on June 23, 1995, after a 12-seat Learjet he was flying on to attend a wedding party crash-landed. As his jet was diverted, he was unable to find a new landing ship in time, as he was traveling from Chabad, Sonora to Guadalajara, Jalisco. Palmer was arrested by the Mexican military officers after he survived the crash landing. Typically, he evaded capture by traveling in full uniform as a federal judicial police officer, complete with identification and a caravan of armed personnel. Ultimately, they found weapons covered with gold and laid with diamonds and a palm tree made with emeralds from the place where he was recovering. El Guero was sentenced to seven years for possession of cocaine. A criminal court of his country assigned him to a maximum security prison in Puerto Grande, Jaliasco, where he met again with his old partner, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who fled the site in 2001. Freedom becomes extradition. In 2002, when El Guero Palmer was about to leave prison for having completed his sentence, an arrest warrant for extradition by the United States arrived in Mexico. Due to this, the drug lord could not leave prison but would remain until 2007. To add more to his misery, when he would finally be sent to the US on June 2, 2003, the US Department of the Treasury sanctioned El Guaro Palmer under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act for his involvement in drug trafficking, along with six other international criminals and three entities. His assets in the US are virtually frozen as a result of the act, which prohibits US citizens and companies from doing business with him. In the custody of the United States, he spent his days among the prisons of Florence, Covalado and Atwater, California. On June 10, 2016, he finished paying his sentence in the US, where he remained nine years of the 16-year sentence. This was due to his declaration that he was guilty of the accusations against him and his good behavior during his imprisonment. The Betrayal of El Chapo According to the New York-based journalist Noah Horowitz, who covered Guzman's trial in the US and detailed Guzman's attempted deal in his new book, the Kingpin offered information on the rival Ariana Felix and Beltran Leyva cartels and his own partner Hector El Guero Palmer in exchange for personal benefit. In 1998, El Chapo Guzman was imprisoned in Puerto Grande prison in southwestern Mexico. He sent a request to Joe Bond, a Mexican-American DEA agent stationed in Mexico City through his brother-in-law. El Chapo asked for a meeting inside his cell. After this, Horowitz went to Guzman's hometown, the Sinaloa state, to speak to people who knew him before he became a legendary cartel figure. El Chapo offered Joe Bond detailed information of their operations, with names and whereabouts of rivals in return for the safety of his family and for dropping the charges against him in the US. 
The meeting included Jose Patino, an officer in the Mexican Attorney General's office who facilitated the DEA's agent entry into Puerto Grande. They posed as sociologists who wanted to speak to El Chapo privately. Soon after, El Chapo handed over information on the whereabouts of drug storages, weapons, caches, the group's entire infrastructure and corrupt officials. El Chapo Guzman also gave up his business partner, Hector El Guero Palma, who had ordered the killing of his brother-in-law. With Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's betrayal, his partner Hector El Guero Palma diverted his life to being a forever prisoner in the land of Uncle Sam. What do you think of our video today? Let us know your thoughts.